Hey everyone, welcome in to another daily editorial here on the KE Report. I'm getting an update from Sitka Gold and we're following up on a news release from yesterday, October 21st. More drill results from the RC Gold project in the Yukon. Two holes and hole 68 is going to be our focus. The headline of 678 meters of 1.04 grams per ton gold from surface. It includes some higher grade components, which I'll let all of you dive into. And I will post a link to the company's website in the show notes so you can read over that news release. I am chatting again with Mike Berkey, Director and Vice President of Corporate Development at Sitka Gold. Company is traded SIG on the TSX Venture Exchange, SITKF on the OTCQB, and 1RF on the Frankfurt Exchange. Now, Mike, look, we've been talking a lot about what's possible at this RC Gold project. The company has a lot of drilling that it's already completed this year and more still to come. Even recently, I had you and Quentin Henney on the show to discuss the big picture potential of this asset. Everyone, if you want to listen to that interview, I'll also post a link in the show notes. But Mike, let's talk about this drill result. Hole 68, this has to be the best drill result to date on this project when you go by gram meter wise. Give us some understanding of where in this overall project and even more importantly in relation to that blackjack deposit was this hole drilled? Yeah, we've been working on this resource expansion of the blackjack deposit for a couple of seasons. Uh, We've drilled a couple spots elsewhere on the property, but this hole was designed to, we've been hitting better grades at depth of the blackjack. We've started to hit uh, higher grade mineralization that would be beyond the limits of an open pit. So really in order to pursue continuing To drill the blackjack at depth, we had to get an understanding of, well, how far does it go? So that's what this was planned to do. We stepped back more in between a a couple of known holes that, that hit mineralization, but there was a bit of a gap in there. So it was designed to fill in that gap in the upper portion of the deposit, but drill down plunge of the deposit and see if we can keep tracking it to depth. And that's what it accomplished. It filled in that gap in between those two holes in the upper part of the deposit, but it continued to intersect strong mineralization all the way down to 680 meters depth, which, as I said, is more in the underground realm of the world. The bottom part of the hole hit that 93 meters of 2.57 grams per ton gold, And there's a sub-interval in there, 5.5 meters of almost 18 grams, and an additional additional intersection of 54 grams over a meter and a half. So we're hitting some really nice high grades at depth that are definitely in the realm of being able to be mined underground. So it really gives us the green light to keep pursuing the blackjack deposit at depth as we hit those, those types of grades. So, Mike, we can see in figure one, figure four, just how much deeper this hole was drilled compared to the other drilling on this project. Look, because you are in the Tombstone Gold Belt, Iris Snowline Gold is very well known for some of the results they've been getting with some of these long holes carrying some good grade. Was this hole drilled also because of the success that Snowline has had on their project? Well, I think obviously we love Snowline Gold. We're drilling the same styles of deposits and their deposit is very persistent. They're getting long, deep holes as well. But every deposits, you know, they have their similarities and they have their differences. And so Blackjack is a unique deposit and we're really finding what appears to be, you know, a nice conduit for this gold mineralization to have come up. So we're finding the deposit plunges steeply to the southeast. And by drilling down and down into that plunge, it gives us an idea of how deep we're going. So it's, you know, obviously the grades that Snowline are seeing and the grades that we're seeing at the Blackjack open up a bit of a new world where these things have the potential to be mined at depth and in an underground type situation. So yeah, just having the confidence that these 
bulk tonnage tombstone suite intrusive deposits that us and Snowliner are encountering in the Yukon have the ability to produce higher grades is a really important part of the story. All right, so this blackjack deposit, the overall deposit size, when it was announced with that initial resource back in January of last year, 2023, is 900,000 ounces at a little under a gram per ton, 0.83 grams per ton gold. You mentioned this hole was drilled between a couple holes, kind of filling in a gap, but then also drilled deeper. What could the carryover impact be on that resource when you do upgrade it? Well, obviously, we're following up on this hole as well because it's, you know, 200 meters deeper than any other hole. So you can't build a resource around one hole. So we've got some more drilling to be able to pull in hole 68 into the resource calculation. But we've had two seasons of drilling. The initial resource of Blackjack that was put out in January of 2023, we've had two seasons of drilling. We've pretty much doubled the amount of drilling on the resource expansion of Blackjack. So we've obviously grown the deposit. We've encountered uh, very good grades, including this one. But if you look at uh, the table on our, our website and our corporate presentation, you can see we've continued to hit some uh, pretty nice grades that are at least as good and in many cases better than some of the drill holes that went into the original resource. So yeah, we're pretty happy with the results and seeing the Blackjack resource continue to grow and we're looking forward to being able to update that at some point in our future here. So you mentioned that you're going to be following up on this. Yeah, obviously you're going to be following up and more importantly, I think even at the lower part of this hole where you saw some of those high grade intervals how do you go about following up, especially at depth, with this hole? Just more drill holes. We've got a great contractor who's doing our drilling for us, and they're able to drill the greater depth. So we'll definitely, when this season is wrapped up, we'll have to step back and have a look at strategies for drilling this deposit deeper down. You know, maybe you look at wedging holes off a you know, a, a mother hole and then daughter holes coming off of it. So there's certainly technical challenges to drilling deep. So we have to look at that and we're a technical team. But we also can't forget that we've expanded the property recently. Um, we've intersected visible gold five kilometers to the south at the Rosgobble intrusion. We've also put a couple holes into the Pukaman. So those are two new areas on the ground that we acquired earlier this year. So we've got a lot of areas to explore, a lot of great targets, a lot of known gold-bearing zones and multiple intrusions. So yeah, we've got our work cut out for us for next year. It's going to be a, a big year and we've got lots of planning to do over the winter season and we're really looking forward to doing that and coming out of the coming out of the gates pretty fast and strong next year. Well, we still can talk about this year and the news still to come. You and I talked about those observations of visible gold in those first two drill holes at the Rosgobble intrusion. That was back more at the beginning of this year. Just remind everybody how much drilling has been done this year, how much you still have to do, and what the focus has been in terms of news flow, when we will get some of these results. Yeah, we've been focused on the Blackjack expansion, but as I mentioned, we acquired that ground of the south, so we put two additional holes into the Rosgobble intrusion and the Pukaman. We're continuing to drill in October here. A winter arrived in the Yukon while I was away recently. We got just about a foot of snow on Whitehorse here, and luckily my lovely wife Eileen had done all the shoveling for me when I got home, so Winter's here. We'll look at continuing our program, but makes sense to close her down for the season and start compiling our results. And then we'll figure out how we're going to approach next year. But as I mentioned, lots of targets. Can you just remind everybody what the budget was for this year? I know the company raised money throughout this year. You're not short on cash, so give us an update on simply the cash front and the budget for this year. Yeah, well, for next year, this year, the budget was, you know, we had budgeted for 15,000 meters of drilling. We'll be short of that. We'll be more around 10,000. We had planned on really bringing in a bunch of extra drills when we acquired that ground to the south. We acquired that ground, but didn't mobilize that as quick as we planned to. So we're a little, we'll, 
we're a little short on the the drill that was budgeted for this year, but we are looking at a larger program next year. We've got ten million dollars in the bank now, so we're well financed and certainly looking forward to a, a larger, a, a much larger program next year. Now that we've been able to consolidate everything and we can plan accordingly. All right, Mike, thanks for the update. Look, there are two holes released in this news release. We focused on hole 68 because it was the headline hole, a very impressive drill hole that you, as you said, you will be following up on, but thank you for giving us some more color on hole 68 and especially that deeper component of the hole. As I mentioned, click that link below. Listen to that interview with Mike and Quentin Henney, as well as click the link to read over that full news release from just yesterday. Mike Berkey, Director and Vice President of Corporate Development at Sitka Gold. Mike, thanks for your time today. Thank you, Corey.